this is a more advanced frame. Our approach will not change. We will still analyze this frame by pulling it apart. And our task remains the same, is to determine the forces acting on the individual bars. However, I would like to pay your attention that there is a particularly interesting point right here. The reason this point is interesting is because we have an intersection of three rather than two bars at that joint. And this makes the use of the third law somewhat more complicated because the third law naturally applies to two contacting bodies. In this case, we have three bars. And so we have to understand how to deal with that particular point. So let me begin by identifying individual free body diagrams. To this end, I will simply pull the frame apart. And in identifying individual bodies, besides the bars, I also would like to identify the pin D as an independent free body. Of course, this pin is at the difficult point where three bars intersect. And so it is very important to understand how to handle this situation. So the free body diagram for the vertical bar involves the applied force plus three pairs of forces associated with the pins. Now, I would like to carefully identify the physical meaning of these two forces. In creating this free body diagram, I disconnected the bar from the pin. Therefore, these forces are the forces that the pin exerts on this bar. In contrast, if I look at the point B, I can think about these two forces as the forces the horizontal bar BG exerts on the bar BD. Next, I will show the forces acting on the bar BG. We have two pins. Uh, the forces at B are chosen consistently with the third law with the forces at B. For the upper horizontal bar, the picture is almost the same, but here I would like to pay your attention that the forces here are exerted by the pin. So this pair of forces and this pair of forces are not directly related as it was the case for the point B. Next, I will proceed with the inclined bar. Again, at D, the forces are induced by the pin on the bar. Let me now look at the pin. The pin exerts three pairs of forces, each pair on one of the three bars intersecting at the point D. Therefore, we show on the pin three pairs of green forces. All these pairs are consistent with the third law. The first pair is with this pair, the second pair is with this pair, and the third pair is with this pair. Finally, we show the forces acting on the right vertical bar. 
and of course I have three pairs of green forces consistent with the third law from top to bottom the first pair the second pair the third pair and I also have a vertical force because there is a roller at the bottom of the board let me do a quick count of equations and unknowns 6 plus 4 10 plus 4 14 plus 2 16 plus 1 17 so we have 17 equations and we have five free body diagrams for the bars and one free body diagram for the pin. The free body diagrams for the bars yield three equations each so that the total count of equations from the bars is 15. The free body diagram for the pin yields two equations because the moment equation about the point D is trivially satisfied. Therefore, the total count of equilibrium equations is 17. The total count of unknowns is also 17. And therefore, it's a reasonable thing to do to proceed with writing down equilibrium equations. Certainly, there are a lot of algebra to be done here. Nevertheless, I'm not going to pay to algebraic difficulties at the moment, and I will simply go from bar to bar and write down the appropriate equations. So, for this bar, we have five, six unknowns, and we can write down three equations. Please pay attention that the force at D is denoted as the force DX AD. So this is the force at D associated with the bar AD. The same goes for the force DY AD. The lower horizontal bar yields the following free body diagram and the equilibrium equations. And of course, you can see immediately that the moment equilibrium equation implies that GY is equal to zero, the force along the y-axis will imply that by is equal to zero so we have a two force member here the same goes for the other horizontal bar df again please pay attention that the force at d is associated with the bar df both dx and dy and again, this bar is a two-force member. Now, we can write down equilibrium equations for the inclined bar. In the natural coordinate system, for us, which is horizontal x and vertical y, these equations do not show that this bar is a two-force member. However, if we choose a coordinate system consistent with the bar, meaning one of the axes is along the bar and another axis is perpendicular to the bar, then we will conclude that this bar is also a two force member. For the pin, the equations simply involve all the forces that are exerted on the pin 
and all of those forces are the opposite of the forces that the pin exerts on the bars AD, DE, and DF. And of course, these are the three bars intersecting at the point D. Now, the final bar gives us equilibrium equations that tie seven forces and uh, we have three equations. I'm not going to solve these 17 equations for 17 unknowns. Rather, I would like to look at the frame again and recognize that we could have identified that the horizontal and inclined bars are two force members. And I would like to exploit this fact in solving the problem. And this will help me not only to simplify the free body diagrams, but it will dramatically simplify the underlying algebra. I will begin by looking at the free body diagram for the entire frame. So I have a free body diagram here that has three unknowns, which are the forces at A and H. And of course, I can easily write the equilibrium equations and solve them for those unknowns. So from now on, the forces at A and H will be treated as no. Now, let me go back and revisit the free body diagrams for the individual components of the frame. The components are still the same. The five bars and the pin at D. But now I will exploit the fact that the bars in the middle are two force members. So I will begin by placing the known forces. Those are the reactions at the vertical bars and the applied load. Now I show the forces on the bars in the middle, and all of them are shown as tension. Next, I will proceed to the left bar, and I will show two forces at D. Again, the physical meaning of these forces remains the same. These are the forces that the pin exerts on the bar. The force in the middle, the green force, is consistent with this force by the third law. For the pin, we have two forces that the bar AD, or the vertical bar, exerts on the pin. And I have the force that the bar TDF exerts on the pin and the force that the bar DE exerts on the pin. Now, if I look at the free body diagrams, the count of unknowns involves two three, four, five. We have only five forces to determine rather than 17. And furthermore, I can see that the forces acting on the bar AD, there are three unknown forces to AD, and one at B. 
So one free body diagram will yield me these three forces. Once I have determined the forces at D, I can use two equilibrium equations for the pin to determine the remaining forces, TDF and TD. Once these two free body diagrams have been analyzed, I can easily reconstruct forces acting on the remaining bars. Here we are. That's the free body diagram for the left vertical bar. The blue forces indicate unknowns. Here's the equilibrium equations and their solution. And now I know the forces at D and I use these forces to calculate the forces TDF and TDE in the upper horizontal and upper and the inclined bar. The forces at D that were determined from the previous free body diagram are now shown in red because they are known. And here we are with two equilibrium equations for two unknowns and observing that the angle theta is such that its tangent is equal to one quarter and this equilibrium equations yield two remaining unknowns. Thank you very much.